Welcome to Laurel Canyon Kitchen. I am Nikki Connor, also known as Holistic Chef Nikki. And today I have Christian Sonali with me. He is a health coach, a certified personal trainer, and a blue belt in jujitsu. He also kicks my butt in boxing. <laughs> Thanks for coming, Christian. Thanks for having me. I'm really uh, looking forward to this conversation. Awesome. Awesome. Why don't you tell me about uh, what you do and kind of like your journey into health and fitness? Yeah, so I got into the, um, the health and fitness world by personal training first. Um, I was working out at LA Fitness, you know, locally, and I really liked working out. I like helping people. My brother was like, why don't you try being a personal trainer, you know, because I was working an office job and it wasn't really what I wanted to do. So the personal training manager at the time said, I have a lot of people that need to be trained. He's like, I could just give you clients right away. We already have, wow. they already have packages. So he's like, go get your certification. So I got one of those weekend certifications and then I just started training people and I loved it. And just, I got so much experience being there for about like eight months to a year. And then my, my friend Andrew's like, Hey, why don't you move to California with me? I'm like, okay, let's just do it. You know, like, <laughs> yeah. I'm like California is a place of, you know, the beaches and, and people really care about their bodies. And, mm -hmm. and so I'm like, that's a great place to learn more about health and fitness. So mm -hmm. that really what's brought me there was uh, health and fitness. And, you know, my friend Andrew is so like excited to go as well. Um, so once I was here, I started training at the UFC gym Nice, because I love the UFC. I love mixed martial arts. So yeah. being there, I started getting into jujitsu and I started learning more about, you know, the body and about strength training and about endurance training and conditioning and and i just started falling more and more in love with it but then it was kind of too far away from me i was living in west hollywood at the time and taking the 405 every day was kind of uh stressing me out <laughs> yeah so i decided change your whole day right yeah <laughs> <laughs> there was one time where it was like two and a half hours of traffic and oh I, my gosh and i was I was not happy. And you just, have to leave it like a specific time frame. Exactly. So it's that. like, I, I kind of figured that out. I'm like, I don't want to do this anymore. Even though I mm -hmm. love the people there, I love like, you know, the community they had. I love my, my coworkers as well. And I'm still friends with a lot of them today. Awesome. I actually, on, every Sunday I play volleyball with one of them, Dustin. Oh, nice. Yeah. Uh, Dustin's, you know, he brought me into this group and we, and every Sunday we play volleyball in Manhattan beach. Nice. Um, I just played last Sunday, this Sunday. Anyway. Um, so when I was at the UFC gym, I couldn't do it anymore. The drive was just taking too long. So I, I decided to start working closer to where I lived. So I found a, a private fitness studio um, that I, you know, interviewed with and they, they liked what, you know, I was going for and how I wanted to improve not only like personally, but I also wanted to improve as a trainer and mm. grow. And that was a perfect place for me to do that. They also, once again, had a great chiropractor that they worked with. So wow. I got, I got into working with people with injuries that way. So that was like a whole new Amazing. industry that I wasn't yeah. even thinking about doing. And then I, I kept on doing personal training clients as well there. I started teaching classes there. Um, I did cross court classes there, hit classes there. So I'm just, I kind of just got a full range of, you know, you know, injury side and I got the strength training side. I got the class side. So it was a great way to also build my character. Mm -hmm. Um, that's kind of how I got started in LA. So awesome. Yeah. And then how did you venture into Pilates as well? So Pilates was from my friend, Katie Joe. So Katie okay. Joe was uh, teaching at the same studio as me at Burn 60. Mm -hmm. And so we were both teaching there. She said, hey, she's like, have you ever tried, you know, reformer Pilates before? And I said, I haven't. So she's like, I want you to come take my class. So I came and take her class. I got my ass kicked. Right? Like, it was so hard. It's I was so like, hard. I was like, oh my God, I have to like, I have to be like, be around this more. So she's like, I'm pregnant and I need someone to take over my classes. She's like, I know you're a good instructor. Mm -hmm. So I want you to take over my classes. You're going to get certified. I'm going to teach you what I know. I'm going to make sure that your classes, that your, um, your, your, uh, the way that you schedule out, like what you're in, like the exercises, mm -hmm. your uh, template's going to be good. So I just got right into it and I, I learned pretty quickly and, and yeah, she was pregnant. I was teaching her classes and you know, awesome. I, I, it was, it was amazing. I love it. Awesome. And that's how we met. Yeah, exactly. You were teaching at my, our friend Carrie's yep. studio and I was like, God, this guy's the hardest trainer. <laughs> like besides Carrie, like you're the toughest one. And it's funny cause I've only been in Pilates for a few years. And, um, as you know, like I used to be a professional athlete and I've been going to the gym since I was like nine years old. Cause my dad owned a chain of gyms in San Diego. And I basically was like thrown in the gym when I was a little kid okay. and kind of, showed the ropes a little bit. So 
as an athlete, I've always worked with trainers and chiropractors and masseuses and all that. But when I got out of sports and I got more into personal training, like working with trainers, I found that a lot of them just like didn't listen to me because they didn't believe that I had the knowledge with about my own body. And they kind of thought they knew what was best for my body. And I've only met two trainers in my entire life who actually get it. And like, you're one of them. And which is why I like training with you because you know, if I, I have pins and screws in my foot, as you know, like I'm part bionic and I'll tell you, I'll say, I cannot like use my foot today. It's a bad day. And you're not going to force me to just jump up and down and like injure myself. When I did CrossFit that destroyed my body yeah. and look like to each their own, if CrossFit someone's thing and you're doing it safely, I get it. But as you know, to get CrossFit certified, it only takes a few days. Yeah, it does. And a lot of these people don't know how to avoid injury. And um, it messed up my body. And so what are you working on now? So right now I'm really focused on um, trying to jumpstart my health coaching uh, practice. Yeah. So I got uh, I got through the Crestor Institute first uh, about a year and a half ago. Mm -hmm. And um, that was great. It, it, it taught me so much about functional medicine, which I really believe in and i believe we need more of it and mm -hmm. people don't know what functional medicine is is basically an approach to medicine that um it doesn't look at disease it looks like the root cause of yeah. what's going on in your body you know if someone's obese right why are they obese are they addicted to sugar we're gonna we're gonna you know talk about that we're gonna focus on that what kind of stuff have you done in your history like th they that those doctors they look at your history what have you been through? What kind of challenges do you face when it comes yeah. to nutrition, when it comes to exercise, when it comes to movement, stress, sleep? These are the things that a, a typical Western medicine doctor isn't prepared to talk about to their clients, to their right. pa patients, which I really believe in. Like Dr. Hyman yeah. is, is one of the people that I really love and I think people should check out because um, he's one of the pioneers with functional medicine. So anyway, going through that functional medicine stuff and going through the fact that when it comes to health coaching, it's, it's all about asking my client what they want. That, yeah. That's the first session is it's all about them. The better they paint a picture of what they want to be in five years, what they want to be in 10 years, what they want to be next month, even though that would be a smaller goal, it's still something to look forward to. Exactly. And then, and then I'm going to find a way that they feel comfortable with going yeah. to that goal. I'm yeah. not going to say, well, you need to do this. You need to do this. You need to do this. You need to do paleo. You need to do keto. Like, I'm not going to do that. Those are options, right? Mm -hmm. And if they're willing to try those out, it's all about experimenting too. I love, I love experimenting with my, with my clients because everyone's right. so different. Yeah. So it's like for, for you, you know, you know that your body loves being vegan, right? Yeah. That's just something that you've tried and it really works well for you. Yeah. So exactly. someone else might try it and it might not work well for them. So it's like, it's all very personal. Yeah. I completely agree. And also I love like, how vocal you've been about trying to like get to the root cause of obesity and put a stop to that. Because yep. I also think that something that's important for us to address that I don't see a lot of doctors addressing this is breaking generational curses. Yep. So when someone says like, well, it runs in my family, mm -hmm. Really? Well, let's stop that now. Exactly. You know, like let's. It's a big excuse for people. They yeah. They say, oh, well, it was, it runs in my family, so I can't really do anything about it. It's like, yeah. no, you can do something yeah. about it. I think like sustainable change is something that a lot of people don't talk about enough. Mm -hmm. They always talk about, oh, well, do this diet and you'll lose 20 pounds in the first month. It's like, okay, I could get my clients to do that, but what's the point? Like they're going to lose 20 pounds and they're going to gain it back the next month after that. Mm -hmm. it's like that. There's no point of doing that. It's actually bad for your body to lose 20 and then gain 20 again, yeah. right? That whole yo-yo thing is what people go through. Uh, and just like, so I'm not going to, I'm not going to say the name, but, um, I had a client who, is an Oscar winning actress and um, she's incredible. Like not only is she like the most beautiful human ever, but um, she takes her roles very seriously where she has to gain and lose weight constantly, mm -hmm. which is very hard on the body. Yeah. And um, her doctor hired me to help her lose like 30 pounds in less than three months. And she did it eating three to four meals a day, my style of cooking. Mm -hmm. Cause like I was the chef preparing everything she ate seven days a week. Um, as I, you know, you don't want them to be starving, but at the same time, um, my thought was, oh my gosh, all this yo-yo dieting, like it's so hard on the body. And, um, it made me not only, I admire this person's work, but also just thinking about like the long-term effects of that and what it does to people. It's not good. It really, I feel like it messes with your, like your set point. So like, let's uh -huh. say someone's 300 pounds, right. And then they lose 50. 
and then they gain it right back. It's just like, it's going to be harder to get down to that 250, I feel like, the next time, right? Yeah. Because your body is like, well, I was at 250, but now I'm back at 300. It's like, whatever you go back to, like, that's where your body wants to stay. Yeah. So it's like, if you take someone that's 300 pounds and you get them to lose two pounds a week consistently over time to when they, they get to a normal weight, like, let's say for women, like, you know, like 120, I'll say, for example, depending on how tall you are. And, and of all, course. And all, yeah. all that, of course. But like, that's so much of a better way to do it. And like, no one, no one talks about that. It's like, and that's what my practice really, I, I love doing is like, I'll take someone that wants to lose a little bit of weight, you know, for summer, you know, summer mm -hmm. body. But I also want the client that wants to lose it and keep it, mm -hmm. keep it off. Like, what's the point of losing it and, and gaining it every single winter, right? Yeah. We, we gain a little bit of, of weight in winter, right? As a, as a human. Or COVID. <laughs> yeah, or COVID, right? Exactly. But like, we, typ we typically eat maybe sometimes different foods. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you've ever experimented with like seasonal diets to, yeah. you know, like eating certain things, but they're still yeah. healthy things, right? They are. They're still whole foods. Yeah. I'm not saying like you're, you're eating much more sugar in the winter. That's not a good no. thing to do, right? But you no. might be eating more like plants that grow in the winter time, like right. squash. Root vegetables. Yeah, exactly. Things like, things that. like that. So I yeah. think I, I, I'm really getting into that now. And, I, and awesome. I really, like, it's cool because it expands your palate mm -hmm. and you're, and you're not being tired of the same foods all the time. Exactly. Because in summer, you're going to eat different things in the winter and spring. And yeah, I really like that. That's awesome because yeah, there's no cookie cutter diet that works for yeah. everyone. I mean, everyone should eat more plants, but it's also about like, how does your body respond to different things? When you start realizing how you function at your best, it becomes like an emotional connection. So it doesn't just become, you probably notice this, like clients will come to you and they'll talk about something that's entirely physical. They'll say like, I want to look a certain way or I want to like be a certain way. Then it gets to like, they really want to feel a certain way. Yeah, it's sure. not, it doesn't become a number anymore. It yeah. becomes like. The number thing is something that I talked to my clients a lot about. I mean, it, it's a great way to show progress, mm -hmm. but I think that's it. Like there shouldn't be a number that anyone is trying to hit because it becomes like this game and they're yeah. always trying to hit that number. And like most of the time they're going three pounds up or three pounds down in a day because of water, right? Water yes. retention, right? Yes. They may have drank in more water or they may have had more salt in their diet the day mm -hmm. before. So it's going to, you know, retain more water or more carbohydrates so I, I i i mean i try not to preach to them but like just being able to be okay with no numbers at all and just being okay with the way you look and the way you feel yeah like that's the most important things that people should really yeah. want just like i want to look good and i want to feel good yeah. it doesn't matter what number you are unless you're an athlete like yeah, for, for example course, for me i have to yeah. be a certain weight you're because right. i weigh in for weight classes when i compete Amazing. so for me i have to do a little bit of you know looking at the scale sometimes right i don't look at the scale all the time it's usually the week or two before my competition mm -hmm. you know because i have to figure out where i'm at yeah i love that i don't own mm. a scale yeah <laughs> and i mean my mom and sister think i'm crazy because they weigh themselves like every day but it's an water weight sometimes. it is and like water weight plays a big role and i know that um like when i started training with you um i just realized i was like i just want to feel strong mm -hmm. and uh, self-defense yeah like sure. i just want to feel strong and protected like yeah. i can protect myself and for me it's about like okay feeling good in your clothes mm -hmm. and uh like enjoying what you see in the mirror but not obsessing over it because nobody's perfect but it's also i think um it can become definitely an obsession because i remember i mean this is funny but when i was so when i was playing professional football I was so fit, like ridiculously were, fit. Yeah, were. I was training four and a half to five hours a day. You're lean. I was so fit that like, <laughs> I, you know, you could bounce like a quarter off my butt and it wouldn't move, but I didn't feel like, I didn't feel sexy. I didn't feel feminine, but it was my job to be mm -hmm. that fit. And people would always come to me. Oh, what are your, what are your fitness secrets? Like, what are your secrets? And I was like, you don't understand. I'm training so much. I eat like crap. Like at that point I wasn't getting into like nutrition yet. Yeah. So I was eating like shit, but people thought they're like, Oh, what's your secret? I'm like, uh, training and having no life. Like basically. Yeah. So, you know, you gotta have the combination because also I was younger then and I got away with it. <laughs> now it's like, okay. Um, it's 80% diet. 20% fitness. It's the marriage of both is like optimum. I think it's sure. like more than, I think it's like 85%. I want to say. I like that. Maybe okay. 90%. Yeah. You know, because like people. You got to be in a calorie deficit if you want to get results. That's true. This is true. But also, like when people talk about calorie deficit, I like to also talk about. I like with my clients to, for them to eat more food, mm -hmm. but with less calories, but I don't like to count calories. So it's like more greens, right? More yes. fiber in their diets because they're going to feel full. 
and but they're but they're eating more volume right high volume eating exactly yeah. high volume high nutrient yeah right and I less firmly calories believe in that too yeah yeah we're, and that's so broad of a topic right you could eat so many different foods that mm -hmm. fit into that you know i personally like cannot live a lifestyle where i do meal prep all the time yeah. just because with my social life you know um sometimes i'm dining out and i don't want to buy a bunch of ingredients and prepare meals and then like waste money and yeah. waste food so for me um i think what's really cool for people to do especially if you're trying to really get into fitness regimen is like have some core ingredients at home that you um that you prepare on a weekly basis that you can make like different meals with you know like sure. i don't know if you do that in your place too yeah i usually do that I usually i have like um i'm a big believer in like uh, like elk meat um these are these are meats that are very like very lean like mm -hmm. uh, turkey, elk, um, things like venison. You know things that are like very very that, like those animals are very very like lean and they're they're fit. Um, so I like doing that as my proteins and I also like eggs of course. Mm -hmm. But I don't like I don't like any eggs. I like pasture raised eggs. So these chickens are able to walk around and have a normal life as opposed to and eat well, bugs. Yeah, and exactly. Eat seeds or bugs or whatever mm -hmm. they eat. You know that that's just natural because if you buy eggs at a supermarket, most of them come from these places where even if it's cage free, they're still in like a chicken coop and they're cooped up next to each other and they're just like it's so gross. If anyone's ever seen that, and mm -hmm. it's just a horrible place for chickens to live. It's so our, horrific. Just like my meat as well. So it's like my meat is raised in like a, a ranch, right? Mm -hmm. they, they're on a ranch. They have free range to, to roam wherever they want. They eat grass, you know, things like that. I think people should really talk, like think about the quality of their food as opposed to just getting it because it's cheap. Oh, this right. is cheap, so I'm gonna buy it. Yeah, you know, th this this meat's on sale, so I'm gonna buy it. It's like, yeah, yeah, but that that, that meat is like you don't have no idea what that. With that fake cow. meat too, with exactly, all this like yeah. lab made stuff, it's like people think that just because it's vegan, it's healthy. It's no, because not the case. if you think about like getting um getting a pound of ground beef or getting a pound of like fake meat, you have to think about the sodium content mm -hmm. of that as well. Like when it's being cooked in, because there's like usually very high sodium content in like burger patties, whether it's plant-based or real. Yeah. Um, it's all about, of course, like getting a plant-based burger, like you're using far less water and it's cruelty-free. But at the same time, people don't think about like the sodium content and the chemicals that are in the food. And so I think it's important to steer people towards eating real food and knowing where it comes from. Yeah, for sure. And it shows that you love yourself by like putting good things into your body. And you know, it's, it's actually often cheaper to go to the farmer's market and like buy certain things or sign up for, um, there's this company, I forget what it's called, but they send you a box of like rejected fruits and vegetables that were, I get that. You do? Yep, it's you called like? imperfect produce. Yeah. I love that. Yeah, that people needs. think are too ugly when really it's just how it grows in the ground. So sometimes it's not actually ugly. So it's, there's three, there's three ways they, they actually give it to you. So one okay. way is imperfect, imperfect, you know, so they can't give it to the grocery store because it doesn't look perfect right. enough for the grocery store. But sometimes they just have a, too much supply uh -huh. and they just, they, they're going to discount it and give it to you because of that. And then the other way is because it's too small sometimes oh. for the grocery store. So like you'll get an avocado. It's a little bit smaller than the typical avocado you'll see in the store. Mm -hmm. So I really recommend, I'm not sure if they're nationwide. I think they're just right now in California and Southern California, but uh -huh. people should look them up if they live around here. Cause I it's, a, it's a great way to save, to save waste because I mean, I don't know if anyone knows this, but 50% of the food that's made in our country is just wasted completely because, because of things like that, where it's, yeah. it's, it's too ugly or it's too small or, you know, it just sits on the shelf for too long and people just throw it away. It's about adding more goodness in. And then they start to realize like, how enjoyable that can be. I mean, I used to want to have like, I want a bowl of ice cream. Now it's like, I'm going to have some dates with chocolate because oh. there's, it's sweet enough. Have you ever had it's coconut like, flake date, dates? Oh my gosh. Oh my God. That's like crack. I cannot <laughs> wait to try this. Oh my God. They're so good. They have them at, I mean, every Whole Foods has them. Everyone has them. They're just like, they're so nice. delicious. I sometimes eat the whole thing and nice. you probably shouldn't do that. Well, they're, they're but, very, dates are very high in fiber, which is great in small amounts, yeah. but it can, it can hurt your stomach <laughs> yeah. a little too yeah, much. Yeah, a little bit. I mean, and they're pretty high in sugar too. So you have to watch yeah, out how many you eat. They are. For sure. Yeah. All right. So thanks for talking to me today. And we're going to get in the kitchen and prepare the perfect post-workout meal. We want to have the nice combination of fats, proteins, and grains so that people can get a full satisfying meal and help with muscle recovery. And we can talk more about that when we're cooking. That sounds awesome. Let's do it. Great. Thanks. We're going to be working on a post-workout meal today that is high in protein, 
and fiber, and we've even got high B12 in this, yet it's plant-based. So what we're gonna do is build some fun, delicious bowls today. Let's do Does that it. sound good? Yeah, I'm so excited. Awesome, I'm okay. hungry. Yeah. <laughs> so for our ingredients, we have lentils, which I eat almost every day, because lentils are not only filling and high in protein and fiber, but you actually burn calories digesting them. So I found that they keep me full for a long time and help me stay on my program. Mm -hmm. uh, I consume lentil pasta or loose lentils like this. And with our bowl, I just cook some green lentils. We have a mixture of brown rice and quinoa so that we can get both fiber and protein. We have some high fiber garbanzo beans or chickpeas, as you would say. We have broccoli sprouts, which are actually more nutrient dense than broccoli itself, though obviously not very filling. And you may see that I use sprouts on a lot of my dishes. Um, that's not just for a pretty photo. It's to help the dish become more nutrient dense. Yeah, I love that. It's awesome. Awesome. And then we have some garlic cashew cream that I made, and we're gonna actually make a lemon dill sauce with this. So it can go on top of our bowl, so it can be really delicious. I heard that you have a lemon tree in the backyard. I do. So is, that's fresh from the backyard. Yes, that's yes, awesome. backyard lemons. I do not have a cashew tree, but Damn. everything else is from my <laughs> garden. And then um, just behind you here, we have a couple avocados so that we'll each have one half in our dish, which will bring us more healthy fats. With the cashews, that'll be a great amount of healthy fat to keep you full for longer. And um, we have some low sodium vegetable stock that we'll be making with our sauce, lemon juice, dill, steamed kale, and the rest of our lentils and broccoli, or, and rice. All right, so why don't we first make our cashew sauce? So we're gonna do that actually on the stove here, and I'll show you how we're gonna do that. But why don't you cut the avocados right, for let's us? Do it. I want to cut in the avocado. I just, you know, looked it up and saw this is like the, probably the best way for me. So I like to get all around it and then just kind of split it out. Oh, that's then, so easy. And then from there, you can either do that, get in there, pop it out, and then after I have the pit out. I like to cut it even more, so cut it into fours. And then once you have it in the fours, I like to kind of just dig it out from there. So over here, I'm just pouring some of our cashew cream onto the pan. And then I am adding some vegetable stock just a little, we're gonna thin it out with this. We're gonna turn the heat down, and then we're gonna start whisking. So we wanna thin it out a little bit so that it spreads more easily on top of our bowl. And you can do this with water as well, but I find low sodium vegetable stock is high in flavor and it just brings more richness because all I have blended here with the cashews is garlic and water. And then we have some lemon juice here. So we're gonna get this stirred up and thinned out. How's it going there, Avocado King? Uh, it's going good. Awesome. Got the second one working. Here's a plate for you to put the avocado on. All right. At the very end, we're going to start adding our dill in here because we don't really want to cook the dill down, but we want to really incorporate the flavor. So we're just going to whisk the dill in here and then we are going to be blending this again because I'll be adding a couple other ingredients to make this extra delicious. All right, this part is done. So I'm going like... to come behind you really quick. Behind and look at us cooking our healthy fats. I Get love it. it. Ready. Now, what are your thoughts on how much avocado is good for someone to have in a day? 
I feel like anywhere between like a half and a full avocado is good, depending on how big it is, obviously. Mm -hmm. You were saying that the avocados in Hawaii are like humongous. Mm -hmm. So you may want to only do a half of those. Um, but you know, avocados have a lot of healthy fats. So I feel like, you know, people actually, you know, that's one of the things that people don't get in their diets is healthy fats. Right. Um, they get a lot of bad fats, right? When you eat something like fried food, and that's all bad fats. So you want to definitely, you know, reduce the amount of fried food and increase the amount of like, you know, uh, olive oil and, you know, coconut oil and things like that that are really healthy fats. Exactly. And it helps with cognitive function for oh, sure. Oh, for sure. We yeah. need fat for proper brain function. Definitely. So here I have our thinned out and heated cashew cream with dill. I added the rest of the lemon juice. We're going to add some apple cider vinegar. Then we're going to add some nutritional yeast, which is high in vitamin B12, which is excellent for our post-workout meal. And we're going to add some Dijon mustard for a good kick. I don't know about you, but I love my mustard. I'm not a huge mustard fan, but... Well, we're only putting one tablespoon okay, in. Okay, so that's okay. <laughs> a little salt here. Some black pepper. And we can get this blended up. We're going to add this. And you'll see it start to go down slowly but surely. See, so that we can just squeeze it out on top of our bowl so that we can control how much we're having. Okay, very cool. Which is great because you can just fill one of these up and you can squeeze it on top of multiple meals after workouts. It's an excellent way for that. It has all the measurements on here. Very cool. Yeah, exactly. So. We'll try to get this all out. It's a little, oh, it's almost done. It's going. It's going. The great thing is these tools are so cheap oh. and easy to get. You can find them online. Yes. So now we're just going to put the top on here. And it's ready for us to finish our bowl. So now we can move over here and start building our bowls. You can do yours in whichever order you prefer, but we have our cashew cream, our garbanzo beans, our quinoa and brown rice, our lentils, broccoli sprouts, avocado. And behind you here, we have some steamed kale that I will move forward for us. I'll take the top off. Oh, look at that. Now, the reason why I steam the kale is because um, some people, such as myself, have a thyroid condition where eating copious amounts of raw cruciferous vegetables can actually be counteractive to yep. that. So I like to blanch or steam cruciferous vegetables if I'm not roasting or sauteing them so that it kind of cuts through that and mm -hmm. then helps it become more easily digestible. Yeah, so people don't know that most vegetables, they have like a defense mechanism mm -hmm. that they use like to ward off prey and to, you know, exactly. so, so it's actually a, a very small toxin coming off coming off the kale You're right. is what people, if they have digestive issues, they really feel it yeah. um, if they eat raw kale. So even though it's a healthy f ingredient, it's still mm. very powerful. And yeah. like we were talking about earlier, people get into trends where they eat so much of something where it's like kale smoothies, kale salads. Yeah. Kale is really good for you, but in the right amounts yeah, and prepared sure. properly so that we can actually break it down and digest it properly. Definitely. Awesome. So I think for our base, we could put um, the lentils, the brown rice and quinoa, and then get our kale in there. Let's do it. Great. So you can do yours first and then I'll do mine and then we can enjoy them. And I'll get the cutting board out of the way so that we can get this. Let's sneak over here. Sneak it. Sneak it. <laughs> what do you like to have after working out at home too? Um, it depends. It depends on when I'm working out, right? So it's like if I'm working out in the morning, I'll have my, my typical morning meal is uh, four pasture-raised eggs, uh, kale, uh, spinach, arugula, um, tomato, onion, and I like to put some hot sauce on top of it. Yum. 
And then, Love hot uh, sauce. Yeah, and then if I have if I my workouts later on in the day, I typically do some type of protein like you know turkey or elk or venison, something like that, with like uh, broccoli and Brussels sprouts, things like that. Okay. Yeah. Nice. Mm. Well, I think these are great ingredients we're using because you could prepare this whenever you have extra time early in the week and have it in your fridge so that all you have to do is heat it up and then you can make different kinds of combinations of bowls. You could either do something that is more Mediterranean style or Mexican style. When you have the basis of great ingredients that are nutritious that will help you for post-workout. Mm -hmm. I love do it. That. Yeah, I need to start making different meals. So I feel like I'm kind of in like a habit or a routine where I eat the same kind of stuff. So I definitely need to expand that. Awesome, well this is definitely a great way I'm getting my extra greens in. And this is also something fun that you can do. It's almost like taco night, but yeah. look at that beautiful well, avocado. Healthy. I'm gonna take the prettiest one. Do it. Do you mind? <laughs> I don't mind. <laughs> awesome. I'm gonna get a little more in here. Now. Yeah, get it, get it. Oh yeah. Got to drizzle it with this. I love it. Yeah, it's, it's a great way. See, like you know, she's a chef because the way that she just like presented that, mine just kind of thrown in there. No. And yours is all <laughs> perfect looking. No. <laughs> it doesn't it. have to be, but <laughs> see so how funny. easy that was. There you go. So now, where's your fork? It's right here. All right. Yeah. All right, let's dig in. Let's do it. I'm gonna see if you like it. The moment of truth. Mmm. Very good. Nice. Love it. All right, well, I'm glad you're enjoying this. Yeah, it's so good. Mm mm mm. This is great because mm. you're cooking all the different ingredients separately in a simple way so you can kind of make your own mixes you can add herbs and spices sauces yeah. and kind of make it your own throughout the week thank you so much for cooking with me today christian where can we find you so you can find me on instagram it's my first and last name so it's christian and then last name is sinelli c-i-n-a-l-l-i -L -L and then you can also find my website uh www.myfirstandlastname.com christiansinelli.com and uh, yeah, I'm actually looking forward to uh, maybe getting some new clients health coaching wise. So you guys hit me up. I do virtual Zoom sessions. So wherever you are, it doesn't matter. You know, we'll make it happen. He's the man. Thank you so much for joining me today. Thank you so much. All right, time to dig in. Let's do it. Mm-mm-mm. <laughs>